Being in the business of Chinuch, you realize that the most enduring and powerful lessons of Mechanech in Pastor's Talmidim are those taught by example. He's a role model. Children want to emulate role models, and a teacher is an ideal candidate for that task. Spending much of his or her day with the Talmidim, the children naturally look up to and respect the teachers. Role models demonstrate not only what they do, but they also demonstrate by what they do not do, specifically by not speaking during davening. In Tehillim, David HaMelech says, Why should I be afraid of the days of bad, the sins that could trap me? The Gemara Masech Tavay explains this as a reference to the sins a person does inattentively. And as Rashi comments there, without any cheshman. One of the fundamental mitzvahs which people tend to trample on is the mitzvah of tefillah. People have a tendency to speak during the tefillahs because they are neither involved nor connected to their davening. A person may feel that coming to shul and spending an hour of his precious time there is more than enough. Why should he be further hindered by not able to speak with his fellow misfallen? Some people may view the shul as some sort of community center to hear about simchas and the latest news and thus do not treat it with the proper respect, the proper cheshivas. Children being remarkably perceptive quickly pick up on all of this. A Rebbe must make every effort to counter that impression. When Talmidim see the Rebbe concentrating on the davening, standing during the Shemayin Eser with reverence, that indicates his connection to the Melech Malchem Lachem, listening intently during Chazar Sashats, following closely the Kriya Satayr. They are given an everlasting impression as to the Cheshivas for davening, which in turn would make a difference in their own manner of davening. Such an impression can be life-changing. It is also worthwhile for Rebbeim to take out time to mention the importance of not talking while davening, as well as the negative consequences if one does talk, most notably the idea of mu'uvais la'yuchal diskain, that once you do something wrong, it's very hard to say to blow back the whistle. Remaining silent during davening is not a mimic, or a chumrah, or midas chasidus. It is an undisputed halacha mufereshis, and some of the examples will show the severe consequences of speaking during davening. And it's things that should shake us all up. Many previous presenters have spoken about the halacha and shulchanach and simen kufchav dalad, that if a person speaks during davening, he is God alavainim and say, the sin that he carries is much too great. This is a quite a harsh term that we don't find anywhere else in the Shulchan Aruch. On that halacha, incidentally, the Mishnah Brewer quotes the Kolba, who says, Woe to those people who speak during davening, as we have seen many shuls destroyed because of this sin. The Shulchan Aruch Arav, also in Kufchav Dalet, quotes the Zoya in Pasha's Truma, and says that one who talks while the Tzibah is giving Sheva Tashem Yisbarach, during Chazar Sashas particularly, is showing that he wants no part in the praising of the Rebbein Shalom. And the Magna Avram, in Simon Chav, Kuf Chav Alav, Kuf Nun Alav, I'm sorry, says that many of the shuls have been turned into churches due to the fact that talking took place in those shuls during the davening. I saw a couple of other halachas that we have to give out to our children. We must know that Mishnah Brewer brings down the halacha that a person has to hear, I don't know the Makar for this, but the Mishnah Brewer says, a person has to answer to a hundred amenim every day. A hundred amenim. If we're talking and we miss out amenim, besides the fact that we're missing the amen and we won't get the 90, it's also that we have amen, we're saying this is amis, and we're not garrisoned. It's a gefer lecha, a gefer lecha, chayt chas v'shalom. Likewise, if a person comes late to davening, comes in the middle of davening, the, the, the Gemara tells us halacha, that a person has to be able to present his shevach before he actually does the davening. It says, We have to be magdav, and the hakdama has to be, as it says in other places in Allah, with shevach first and then the tefillah. 
if we're going to come late to Dantling, we're missing out all the Shvachis. We're missing out everything we were we supposed to say before we went to the actual Bakashas to the Rebellion of Shalom. How can we continuously do that and expect that our Bakashas should, should be accepted? In these days of El, where we're coming so close to the Yom and the Rayim, it is a wonderful time to make sure that our Rebellion show our Talmudim. And it's for Nishkeshatim if, if the uh, adults as well take on this Indian before, before the time of Rosh Hashanah. And we are the Maisa in an Ace Tzara, I say. We can't say Nishvay Love. You can't forget that thing. And we don't know what the next year is going to go bring. But if we are misfouled properly, that it shouldn't come on to us, Chas Hashanah, and Nishim Tzaras. In that Zachus, Be'ez Hashem is Bavu, 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 Be'ez Hash